But here's the deal, Dan. When you start using the system, when you realize, you know, today is a couple of machines we've got in here uh, just for, for demo. Um, you know, as you grow your business and, and, and two machines becomes 20, 20 becomes 50 and 100, you're going to find that you live in Kaseya all day long, at least while you're doing remote support all day long. You're going to have your ticketing system open in one window. You're going to have Kaseya open in the other window. And you're going to be working your tickets and using Kaseya to take care of the problems. When you get to that point, this view that we're looking at, this is the agent tab and agent status. This is my favorite view. Okay, I, I love this view. This fact, you can set that. That's one of the preferences that you could set over on the, on the system tab. You can set what you want your default home page to be. This is my default home page, agent tab, agent status, or agent module, agent status. And I like this view for three different reasons. First, I can see the status of all my machines. Like I'm, I'm king of the castle here. My little soldiers are all lined up. I can see who's ready, who's not, who's online, who's offline, who's busy. There's five different icons that you're going to run into in your day-to-day -day, um, using of the system. Uh, we've only got three of them displayed here. Let me pull up the help menu. Okay, we're going to actually use the help menu here. And I'm going to scroll. Remember, it's context sensitive, so it's on the agent status. I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom for you, and I'm going to basically just show you the machines. Now, there's actually eight different icons here. I'm going to tell you to ignore the first one and ignore the last two. You'll, you'll rarely, if ever, see them. Don't even worry about them. Let's focus on the five in the middle. Now, the first icon is the green one. Agent is online. Life is good. The machine's checking in. All systems go. We, we, we like seeing a green icon. All right? The next one is a face. When some user logs into that machine, it's automatically going to change from green to be a face. So it's an agent is online, everything's still good, but a user logged in. That's, the, that's it. They're both the same. The difference between a yellow face and a blue face is inactivity. As long as they're actively using the machine, it's blue, but as soon as they walk away from it for 10 minutes, it turns yellow. It lets you know that they're not actively using the machine. The gray is bad. That is an offline agent. Now, it's more bad on a server than a workstation. We don't really worry about workstations sure. that are offline or laptop that happened to shut down his laptop and he's going home. Hey, whoop de doo But a server, obviously, that's gray is critical. So we don't, like to see, we don't ever want to see the gray on a server, um, and we worry about the gray on workstations and laptops after they've been out there for a while. And then when we talk about some of the monitoring in the advanced training, we'll talk about the different settings that are already in the template for you for that. And then, of course, we've already seen the, the little orange box. That's the agent that's never checked in. Okay, so those are your five icons. Again, feel free to hit the help, help button um, to, uh, to get those back. All right, so that's great. So the second thing, the next thing that I like about this is this is my jumping off point. When I want to work on one of these machines, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the icon next to their name, and it's going to load Kaseya Live Connect. Now, this is Kaseya Live Connect. This is new to version 6. It's kind of, you know, the crown jewel of, of, uh, uh, of Kaseya. It, it, the ability of Live Connect is to allow you to basically take control of that machine and do things without interrupting the user. And that's the, you know, that's the beautiful part of it. Now, the first time that you run this, it's going to be a little bit of a pain. You're going to have to install a bunch of plugins on your browser. It's only one time per machine that you use to remote control from, okay? So just bear with it, get everything installed, and then after that, it's, it's really not too bad. So as What's, it loads uh, up here and... and what browsers know, does it run on? Because I'm a Chrome um, user. Fi only Firefox. Today, Firefox and, and um, IE does not support Chrome. Okay. Um, so what we have here is, and as it's making the connection, um, it, what we have here is a bunch of different tabs or, or functions that we can choose from. We have things like agent data. So we can get information about this computer. Already I can see at the top of the screen that it's an XP computer, and it's got you know, two gigs of RAM assigned to it, and it's service pack three. Um, so I can look at the pending procedures. I can look at the logs, all this different information. We have audit information about that machine. So we can go in and get and get audit information, like um, you know, tells me, hey, oh, this is a VM machine, right? It's a lot, it's a VM machine. If I were to look at uh, my machine, I would see it's like a Dell machine, 
um, and it would be, I mean, we could, uh, let's, let's not worry about it. it. It would show you uh, a link to Dell's website. You can click on the link. It'll take you right to the, to the support page. It'll tell you what the warranty is left on it. So it's really cool. Oh, that's so it, it gives you all kinds of good information about um, the, the machine. Uh, RAM, uh, this is a virtual machine, but it would tell us how the RAM is configured, what, what modules are in what slots. So if I'm trying to upgrade memory, I can look at this and say, um, you know, hey, I don't have any more banks. I used 512K sticks. I had four 512K sticks, not one 2 gig stick. And so if I want to upgrade RAM, I got to pull something out before I can put something in. So you're going to take that into consideration when you're calculating your, your RAM. Um, we do a PCI and uh, disk and hardware audit normally. Um, it's not listed here uh, because this is a VM machine, and actually we probably haven't even gone through a full audit on here. Uh, let me let me uh, let me try to connect it. I'm going to connect to my machine here real quick, just to uh, give you another kind of another view of it. Um, and while we're doing that, let's go back. Let me go back and and uh, talk about this some more. So anyway, you've got a lot of good information, installed applications, system information, disk volumes, all that's uh, kept for you. But the most important thing you have are these other pieces. We have a file manager. We can transfer files back and forth between the machine. Command shell. So I can click on a command shell, and what it's going to do is <laughs> give me an error. That's nice. Uh, is it's going to give me a, a C prompt on that machine so that I can actually go in there and run a command. Um, you know, run a command at the prompt level. Um, we can we can look at the registry. So we can look at the um, local. You know, basically the whole registry key, and I can actually change registry values right here. Um, or see, you know, see what's going on on a particular on a particular key. Can you um, export values? I, no, you can't export. You can just look at it. I, I don't think okay. there's there's no right click. No, you can create a new key, but you can't export it. Just curious because I typically mm -hmm. back up before I ever change the yeah, registry. I mean, you could <laughs> you'd have to remote control to do that, but I mean you could get in there. Uh, Task manager is a, is a nice one. You can actually see what's going on on the machine. So you can look at, um, you know, the, the processes that are running. You can see what machines, you know, basically what, uh, what process is using, C, you know, a certain amount of CPU. So if I, you know, sort, I can see, you know, hey, yeah, of course, the idle process is click kicked in. But you can see all the different processes that are consuming resources. Look at the services. Stop and restart a service. So the idea, let me see if the other one is up here yet real quick. Um, yeah, like there we go. Me. So, um, so you can see, you know, on this is the machine that we're looking at right now. Let's try to do the command shell again. Sorry. It, so here's okay. the command shell. So what if I call you up? I'm like, damn, man, I can't, I'm having problems with my printer. You could go here and you could basically just run a shell, you know, net stop spooler and stop, you know, stop, stop my spooler. Okay, and then go in and basically go to, you know, navigate to my uh, my spooler directory, delete all the files that are out of there, and then come back and that start the spooler again. Okay, and so you can do all this. Now, I'm still using the machine. I mean, I, I, I'm doing, working on my Word or doing whatever. You haven't interrupted me at all. So I can do all these different tasks without interrupting the user until you get down to desktop access or you're going to chat with them or something. Until you get down to desktop access, I'm able to view events, do the task manager, do the registry, transfer files without interrupting the user. All right. That's going to show cool. you. I was going to. Yeah, it's really neat. It's, it really should help you uh, become more efficient. Uh, I was going to show you just real quick the system. See the Dell. See this. It knows it's a Dell. I click on that little tab, That's and it's going to take me to support.dell.com, and it's going to come up and tell me every, you know, picks that exact machine. It knows it was born in December 2008, two years, two years old now, and um, and it's got 345 days of warranty left. So if I have a problem with a drive or something, I can, you know, get that fixed. Um, and then uh, PCI and disk hardware audit. You can see it's got lists of all of the all of the components of my machine. So if I need to rebuild this computer, there's no doubt about what's in it. And it'll save this data even if the machine is offline. Oh, that's great. All right. Um, so, you know, what if I had to rebuild this computer? I'd need to know, like, what, you know, what hardware, what disk volumes, you know, I need to install. It knows that I've got, um, you know, a one, you know, like a terabyte drive in there, basically, and, you know, so it can look at that. Um, it looks at the installed applications. It's got a list of all of the executables that are on my machine. You'll notice it says 311 pages. So that's 3,100 and 
10, give or take a, a screen full of different executables that it's found on my computer. That's a lot of files. Yeah. Now, if you wanted to rebuild my machine, thing? would you want to go through this and find all those files, like make a list, a checklist of everything that you needed to reinstall? Probably not, right? I mean, that would be a lot of work to go through 3,000 files and make a list. Yeah, I got to install Office. I got to install Adobe, you know. So what would we do? Well, we've got an answer to that. We wouldn't use this. What we would do is minimize this, go back to our, um, our main system. Let's go to the Audit tab, and let's go to the Add Remove Program Audit. And what we can do is with that add remove program audit, we can go to the home, you know, the, the machine, and you can see these are oh, all the programs the that we programs. have installed. This is your checklist. Now you can go in and, and rebuild that machine exactly the way that you want it. Okay. Um, we even have, if you need your software licenses, we even have a software license audit that can be run. It'll show you the license keys for that, um, for those machines. All right. So you can, you, you know, you, can, you don't even have to... Um, if you've lost your like Office 2010 or 27 license key, it'll be in the software license audit. Oh, all right. Um, all right. That's so really and it'll yeah, stay no, there even if the machine really is offline. Even if the machine is offline, it's all in there. As long as we got one good audit out of it, you're in good shape. Cool. Okay. All right. So um, let's go back to the agent status. So that's our jumping off point. You know, we talked about you know getting into it. So the last thing that I like about this screen is the columns of information. Now, when you start out, you get like these four, five basic columns of information. Honestly, they're not that useful. But well, here's what I would suggest. Click on the select columns button and add the columns that will be more useful. So for me, the things that I like are domain, operating system version, IP address, connection gateway is useful. Um, I scroll down. I like the RAM size. I like the last logged in user, not only the current user, but the last logged in user, uh, the manufacturer of the machine, and then I also like what's called the chassis type. That's going to help identify laptops, notebooks versus desktops. So I just simply uh, add those over here. Now, once I get them over on the displayed side, I'm going to kind of organize them a little bit. I'll take the last logged in user, and I'm going to tuck it in right next to the current user. So that'll be right there. Um, the last check-in time, you know what? Don't really care. Put, I'm going to move it to the end. RAM, I'm going to move up over the domain. Um, I noticed the last reboot time. I don't care about that at all. I'm going to remove that completely. And let's see, what else do I have here? Chassis, manufacturer, connection. That all looks good. Um, you know what I need? OS version needs to be up underneath. There we go. Let's try it. Let's see what that looks like. So I'm going to hit apply. And now it's going to redraw that screen. So you can see that now I have the current user and the last logged in user. And well, what happened to me is that um, somebody would call me and want me to work on their machine, but they would log off. And then last log or current user goes blank. When, it, when it's a green, this is blank. And I wasn't smart enough to always name my machines with the user's name. And so the last logged in user became really useful to me to find the user that I was going to do work on when it was workstation one, workstation two, workstation three. Mm. Hey, I know that this is a Vista machine. I know the it's a business edition. It's got this service pack on it. It's XP with you know professional, so I know the flavor and even the service pack. Um, I know the RAM that's installed on the machine, and I'm going to use that. I mean, if somebody calls and says that their machine's running slowly and they've only got 256 meg or 512 meg of RAM, I don't want to spend a lot of time troubleshooting that. I, I kind of know what's wrong. We need to upgrade RAM. Now, you know, if somebody calls with three gigs of RAM and a Vista or 7, I, it's probably not RAM. I'm going to keep digging. Um, I know the relationship of this machine to a domain or a work group. I know that this computer is a member of the Network Depot domain. Okay, D tells me that. I know the IP address, I know the get, and I know the connection gateway that it's being connected from. I know this machine is, is not connected. It's in a different location. Okay, so there are two different locations for that. Uh, one's a Dell, one's a mini tower. This one's a VMware, so we know it's you know it's just a VM. It doesn't have a chassis. Type. It doesn't have a chassis. Right. <laughs> if, it was a, if it was a notebook or a laptop, it would show up there, and we'll use that data. I mean, you treat those differently. Okay. Do you know so, if it's smart enough to detect netbooks too? Yeah, as long if the chassis type is 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 marked as a netbook, it'll it'll come in as a netbook. Okay. It, it's just a question of what the BIOS. This is not Kaseya figuring this out. This is the manufacturer programming these values into their BIOS. Gotcha. So okay. it pulls it out of the system. Itself. Yep, it pulls it out of the system when it goes in and pulls all that inventory data out.